Oh, here's a sword that has increased quite a bit in cost since I got it. The Brighton by Valiant Armory. Valiant Armory used to buy the blades and then make the hilts and assemble them, but now they're making the blades in their shop as well. This sword used to be 550-ish when I got it, and now it's 845. The good news is, from what I understand, the quality of the blades that they make themselves now is higher, even though they weren't bad before. And the problem with that is that now they're no longer mid-range. Valiant Armory used to be higher value than budget-priced swords like Windlass and Hanway and, and all of that but still under Arms and Armor and Albion. Now they're much closer to Arms and Armor and Albion, so they're basically high-end swords now as well. So this one here, which I said is the previous version, I put through its paces, did some cutting with it, and what's really remarkable about this sword is the weight. It only weighs 864 grams or 1.9 pounds, which is the lightest arming sword that I've handled so far. The balance is also pretty close to the hilt, so it's an impressively fast and nimble sword. Like, insanely quick. And it cuts really well. It's one of the best edges out of the box that I've handled so far. And you know how picky I am about blade sharpness, so when I say it is very sharp out of the box, then yeah. Pretty freaking sharp. So I had to do absolutely nothing with it. No need to change the, the blade geometry, no touch-up needed whatsoever. As it came, it was more than adequate. Before we move on to the remaining tests, let me say a few words about the visuals. The design is beautiful and the finish flawless. Well, not anymore now, after the hard tests. The handle is expertly shaped and fits the hand perfectly. I like the intricate pommel shape and the curved quillons. And the scabbard is just gorgeous. That's what I call tastefully decorated. Here's a thrust of my synthetic ballistic gel torso. Now, this setup is extremely tough. This is way more resistant than a real torso would be to a thrust. And uh, yeah, you can see this just, it's, it's the solid block that is almost impenetrable. But I mean, that wasn't bad. For this kind of material, it did pretty well. But this is an excellent cut and thrust sword. It's quite good at each. So the shape of the pommel gave me some ideas. Good for a murder stroke, right? So I was messing around a little bit. Just get a pommel. That might actually be reasonably effective. Oh. Oh no, what the hell? Really? Okay, so I was just messing around and I've done murder strokes with cheaper swords. And yeah. This was just kind of a bit of a light tap. I wasn't even being serious about it. Hey, <laughs> you bent it again. I noticed before that the pommel is it kind of shifting around? I can twist it. So murder stroke can be considered somewhat abusive, although not unreasonable. It is a historical technique after all. This on the other hand is solidly in the are you freaking crazy unreasonable abuse category. Yeah, when I shot it for my 1 million subscriber special, that had a clear don't do this at home vibe all over it. But it held up really well. Can't complain about the blade at all. Now well, this is a lot more appropriate as a test. Now plywood, of course, isn't really a good equivalent to a historical shield, but it's certainly not unreasonable. A sword would have encountered worse things, you know, other swords, armor, and things of that nature. So this is perfectly fair as a test. If a sword is to be considered better already, it should be able to deal with that. So, and also I wasn't hacking into it terribly hard. So, yeah, nothing too out of the ordinary. The plywood here is also pretty rotten. And I could definitely feel the pommel moving here. Epic sun reflection time. Now against the grain, that should be harder. So these tests here didn't do any visible damage to the edge. Of course, this kind of thing would dull the edge somewhat, but the way it's shaped and with the, the quality of the steel, it really doesn't dull very quickly. 
So the blade itself took all of this in a stride, no problem at all. That's not the issue here. The issue is in the hilt, as you'll see in a moment. The tang is bent, and I'm guessing that's what caused the pommel to loosen up in the first place. The tang deforming. So it looks like the tang is simply too soft. The temper was off here. I'm hoping that they fix that, or if not, that they will do it in the future. If this issue is fixed, then I would could very, very easily recommend this sword at the original price. At the current price with the higher end blade, well, I could probably still recommend it, but of course I haven't tried the newer versions myself, so there's only so much I can say. And it is a bit of a shame that it's no longer a mid-range option. The good news is I only had to tap it on the wood three times to straighten it back out. But you can probably see there is a bit of a gap, so the pommel is still loose, of course. If it's too soft, that's definitely more historically accurate than if it was too hard. So bending rather than breaking is still preferable, but, you know, could be better for sure. So I'll link Valiant Armory's website down below, and also Cult of Athena, where they offer current Valiant Armory swords. So check it out, and I hope you found this helpful. If you liked the video, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Or maybe you want to buy some razor blades. This also helps out the channel. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good one, folks.